Well, that escalated quickly. If you are somewhat of a collector yourself, the issue that has just been illustrated to you might look familiar. You might run out of shelf space for all of the weird stuff you have collected over the years, like I have recently. But that has not always been the case. I have been collecting models since I was a child. But let's just say that plastic models don't take very kindly to the treatment of children. So needless to say that many of them got broken and did not survive for very long. Plus, plastic models are expensive, at least when you don't have a lot of money, which tends to be the case when you are a kid. And it takes a lot of time to assemble and paint them, of which you don't tend to have a lot when you get older. So there has been some kind of fluctuation of models in my collection over the years and storage space has never been that much of an issue for me. But then I got my first 3D printer. And I also decided that I was going to learn Blender. For real this time. It was like the third or fourth or even fifth attempt. But for real. I was going to learn Blender. And not only learn it, but master it. And I was going to use my newly acquired skills to create my own 3D printable models. All of the stuff I couldn't afford as a kid, now I was just going to create them myself. With the years came experience and the speed with which my collection grew increased massively. Which led me to the point that this video is about. Where to put all of this stuff? It is just sitting there and gathering dust. Standard showcases wouldn't cut it since I would need pretty big ones. Just look at these big boys and I had no room available where to place them. But it was clear that I needed to find a way to put things on top of other things. So the idea was born to invent a modular system for showcases that can be adjusted in size and be stacked on top of each other. In short, three-dimensional Tetris. Thus began a tedious research process. I wanted to know if anyone ever came up with something like this, but I didn't find anything. I guess what I was looking for was way too niche for anyone to ever seriously considering it. So I had to create the system completely on my own. What followed was a process of designing and prototyping. The requirements were as follows. I wanted a modular system to build showcases which are easily adjustable in size in all three dimensions. I wanted them to be stackable, kinda like some sort of Lego system. I wanted to keep the variation of different parts that are needed for any specific showcase as small as possible. Of course, a showcase needs a door. Pretty self-explanatory, but if you don't write it down as a specific requirement, you might end up with a showcase which is missing a door. Since I want to be able to alter the composition of my collection every now and then, the showcases needed to be lightweight. Oh, and of course they need to be stable enough to allow for easy repositioning. And surely they needed to be as low budget as possible. After a few iterations, this is what I came up with. Here we have the standard element that the whole system revolves around. It has a length of 8 cm. There is a hole in the middle to accommodate for an M5 threaded rod. Here you can see the rails that are going to hold the acrylic glass. And on these sides you can see those nooks and crannies which would later allow for the finished showcases to be stacked on each other. But how do those elements come together? Let's have a look at the 3D model. This is what the smallest possible unit looks like. It is 10 by 10 by 10 cm. Highlighted in blue you can see the standard element I just showed you. Then you have the corner elements marked in red. They look like this in a close-up. For the sake of simplicity I have not shown the door for now. But that's basically how the system works. And now you can arrange these showcases a little something like that. But of course the point is not to have a lot of 10 by 10 by 10 showcases sitting around. Usually bigger ones are needed. Let's say you need a showcase which is 10 cm high and 10 cm deep but has a length of 30 cm. For this I have here an intermediate element marked in green. It allows me to extend the length, height or depth of a showcase. Or what about 10 by 10 by 20? 
or 30 by 20 by 30, no problem. And you can still put them together like this. But all of that looks well and good on a computer screen. But does it actually work in real life? Let me show you the results and explain how it went. So this is the first showcase I finished. And it didn't turn out to be very good. In fact, it turned out to be so bad that I'm going to tear it down and completely rebuild it. Let us start with the obvious flaws. These ugly looking glued areas. Well, the kind of glue you use actually matters. I have made a few trials testing different glues and gluing techniques, but it appears that my testing wasn't thorough enough. And I ended up with spots looking like this, where I applied too much glue and then trying to remove it in the aftermath, only making it worse. Or look at this, or this, doesn't really look nice. And of course, once you get the glue on the acrylic glass, there's no coming back from that. No way to clean that up. Then, closely connected to the first issue, not properly securing the pieces. That happened a lot, and the result are those weird looking gaps. Another one, accidentally gluing pieces that ought not to be glued, like here on the hinge. I had to remove and replace the part, which took quite some force. And last but not least, the door which doesn't close properly. One point for sure are not suitable gluing techniques. But also not knowing how to precisely cut acrylic glass is a deciding factor. On to the second iteration. It looks way cleaner than my first try. There was almost no spillover from the glue. The dimensions are within the tolerance. You can even open the door with one hand which is a significant improvement. But another major improvement is this additional elevated stand. It allows for better visibility for the model in the back. One minor improvement I have added in this version are the elements shown here, which include a door stop. Iteration number 3. Here I just built a very simple showcase for two 1 to 350 scale frigates. The only changes made to the design at this stage is the door frame, specifically the intermediate elements. They are way easier to print and the overall design just looks much cleaner. I also added neodymium magnets so the door will remain shut. Moving on to a very special design. I had all of those small frigates and corvettes sitting around and I wanted to put as many of them as possible into one case. So the solution I came up with included two elevated platforms arranged like a staircase and then another elevated platform above that. From there on it became almost a routine. These showcases I am very satisfied with. The acrylic glass has been cut precisely into shape, thanks to this acrylic glass cutter which has been sitting on my desk all that time, but somehow I didn't bother to use it. And I started refraining from gluing the frame and the acrylic glass together. I found that it's not really needed because of the threaded rods. They take the function of rebar and absorb all of the tensile forces while the 3D printed parts absorb the compressive forces. They are glued together with super glue and thus there is a highly intense bonding force between them because of the rough surfaces of the different parts. 
And then the acrylic glass provides the overall stability to the showcase and it doesn't need to be glued anymore. The only exception to that is the door frame. Now at the end of this video, let me show you a few shots to illustrate why I went through all the length of developing this system. Here are just a few ideas on how those showcases can be put together. So, what's next? Well, I still need to rebuild this one. And I also think a model like this should receive some special attention. So I already do have some ideas for some gadgets I would like to include in the next generation of showcases. And of course, the same goes for this big boy. Then there are all of those models. I do have some ideas on how I would like to present them, so the showcases I'm going to build for them will be a little bit different and will require a lot of special parts, but they will still fit into the system. And let's not even talk about this nerdy stuff here. So as you can see, there is a lot of work still to be done.